G'day everyone, artist Wayne here, and say hello to a couple of new writers, Ned and Jeff. They joined Roger, Clint and I one beautiful Sunday morning for a ride in the Wadigans. In fact, we all met at the Wyong Milk Factory for a butte breakfast, where we were also joined by my wife Jackie and our good mate Catherine. Jackie was riding her bike for the first time after her accident, and she and Catherine went for their own lovely casual ride. As for us, well, we took the two boys from Bondi and headed over to the Ramp of Death. Now, it's been one hell of a hot summer here in New South Wales, Australia, but this particular Sunday was slightly overcast which was a welcome change, I can tell you. We've been riding some fairly tough trails for these big bikes lately, so the heat really takes it out of you. So I must say I'm kind of looking forward to the weather getting a little cooler. After watching Roger, Clint and I survive the ramp of death, it was now time for Ned and Jeff to put their lives on the line. Ned was riding his Yamaha XT250 and Jeff was riding the mighty Suzuki DRZ400 which he let me ride a little later on in the day and I must say very light and very nimble although I love my DR more than ever I love the big fat 650's power and I love how planted she feels but it's just what I'm used to and I could definitely get used to riding the DRZ400. Anyway, once we were finished with the ramp, we headed down the mountain, onto the road, then we made our way over to the wet and muddy Jillaby Trails. This is where an artist like myself gets to paint his DR650 with mud. Once we were up the mountain near Muir's Lookout, it was time to hit the single trails. Our plan was to do singles from here all the way over to the Olney headquarters then jump back on the main trail and head over to Colnura for lunch. But if you're a rider you know that not all rides go to plan. And it wasn't long after this that Roger had a bone crunching stack. When we went back to see how he was we honestly thought he'd broken his wrist. The thing looked terrible. We strapped up his wrist and rode straight out of there, got him some painkillers, and when he started feeling better, we all went and had lunch. And after that, he rode home, all the way to Sydney. Our very next ride was in four days on Australia Day, mate. And do you think Roger made that one? Of course he did. He's tough. He's as tough as nails. And why wouldn't he be? He rides a DR650. We were also joined by Sam and Clint, and Clint had come up with his wife Lisa, bringing a whole heap of delicious snags and yummy lamb cutlets. That's right, us boys were riding through the Wadigans, and we were going to meet Lisa and Jackie, who were bringing our four-wheel drive in for a Bonza Australia Day barbecue. And of course it was all going to be washed down with beers and red and white wine doesn't get any better than that.
And as you can see, the trails were absolutely perfect. We'd had a whole heap of rain the night before, so it was wild, wet and slippery. We worked up an appetite making our way through the single trails towards the Pines camping area. And when we finally arrived at the Pines and met the girls, Lisa cooked the perfect barbecue. It was the perfect way to celebrate Australia Day. Great company, great food, great beer and wine, and great riding. And after lunch it was time to say farewell to the girls and make our way out of the Wadigans. And after doing plenty of single trail and riding back down the mountain, that's when things went a little pear-shaped. About 15 minutes before we got out of the forest, Clint dropped his DR650 in a mud hole. And the bike was completely flooded with water. Here we were, stuck in the bush, late in the afternoon. We only had two hours of daylight left before the forest would be filled with deadly drop bears and hunting yowies. Would Clint get his bike going? Of course he would. It's a DR650. 